Mix It With Mike plugin of the week comes from Plugin Alliance and Lindell. It's the 69 series. Adding to the 50 series and the 80 series, this brings us the Helios console born out of Olympic Studios. Uh, the creator is an engineer called Richard Svetenham. He is a uh, he was the one who created the console at Olympic Studios back in that day in the late 60s. And uh, prior, most studios would build their own consoles. Trident console came out of Trident Studios. Um, some of them went commercial. Obviously, a lot of the Abbey Road consoles, red consoles and stuff were exclusive to Abbey Road Studios. Uh, but this one ended up not being the case. So while the first one was not called a Helios console, uh, Chris, ba uh, Chris Blackwell from Island Records sort of dropped a little coin into uh, Richard's pocket, said, hey, why don't you just create your own company? Let's brand this as Helios and then we can sell it to other studios. I don't know if Olympic was very happy about that, but it did find its way into a number of studios and uh, what we have here is an emulation of some of that work. Now, every one of the EQs um, and uh, I believe the compressors that were made for, by Helios were sort of unique to the individual studios that commissioned them. So what you end up with, if you look at all the emulations, you'll see a lot of different things. Like here you see a high frequency selection of 6, 10, and 14 whereas the other existing emulations by Waves and Universal Audio in particular only have a fixed 10K. On the low end, you'll see things like the low frequencies being 120, 240, uh, 400, and you see that you have different numbers here. So that could be specific to what Lindell had to work with when uh, they were modeling this out or perhaps when they got the original units, what quite often happens is when they measure the actual frequencies, they end up being different from what the labels on, on the console were. But let's have a, a quick overview of it, and, uh, and then we'll kind of listen to it. Uh, it's a great, rich sound that also has clarity and openness and punch to it it's a gritty sound that is a big part of all the big 70s rock records including led zeppelin and many many others david bowie uh so many people recorded out of olympic studios uh, i believe that even the beatles did some work there as well for abbey road i could be wrong about that um but uh but anyway a great sounding console a very unique one and uh, so let's kind of go over it. So we got VU meters showing the input, game reduction, pretty straightforward. A preamp gain here, so you can drive this upward to get some saturation. You could also do it here with the THD to sort of drive a little saturation in on its own. It has a unity switch, so as you drive this upward, it will actually counterbalance the output of the plugin. So after everything, it'll counterbalance the levels. So depending upon what it is that you're doing, when you drive this up, you may be creating more compression, so it may not sound even, but that's the idea. So before you put in any other processing, that would be the way to do it, to sort of find uh, your middle ground there for how much you want to saturate or not. Um, you can also uh, uh, have a 20 dB pad and uh, and then this just switches the meter uh, for in or out. Straightforward. Now there's a pre-EQ69. It's interesting that on the website, I'm just going to kind of go there real quick and just point this out because I'm not sure if there's something new that's coming and if it shows up in an update keep an eye on it but it says there are two classic eqs on every channel there's a pre-eq 69 the three band active that's what we're seeing here when we look pre-eq 69 and then it also says there then there is a passive 69 a two band shelving eq um that's included so and that's not what we have here the way that this works is we have the three frequency selections but this is a shelving eq plus minus 10 db um, interestingly, when you go to, I think it's plus minus 15 or plus minus 12 on the emulations done by Waves and Universal Audio. So there's some different gain structure stuff as well. Again, probably the unique design of the particular modules that he, uh, that Lindell used. Uh, frequencies here all uh, look the same to me. Uh, you have the boost cut switch uh, here. It's a peaking EQ. Uh, and our bell curve EQ uh, boost up to 15 or 16 dB actually. 
Uh, the low end base boost here. It, now, when you work this, it could work one of two ways. If you go to the upper thing, it'll actually give you uh, a base boost with a bell curve. So it's not a low shelf. Often what you see here, like with an EVE 1073, is low shelf, high shelf, and a mid-band EQ. This actually gives you a bell curve on the low end as well. Um, all right, so if you have it there, this deactivates it, and then you have the gain here. Um, but if you go to the attenuation, what it does is a low shelf at 50 hertz. So uh, perhaps unless they're saying this is a passive and that is a passive circuit, and uh, otherwise it gives you the mid, I, I don't believe, I'm not so sure that that's what's going on. If, if I'm misunderstanding something from the reading of the documentation on the Plugin Alliance website. Either way, this shelf at 50, you could go up to 15 dB of attenuation, so that will just sort of ride up the frequency spectrum. And that's a nice way to tuck uh, low frequencies on instruments where you don't need it. Now, now uh, none of the other emulations I've seen have a high-pass filter. Looking at the documentation for what they have here, they don't make mention of whether this was included or part of the original or something that they added in, so there's none of that. Uh, but it does give you a high-pass filter, 40 and 80. It doesn't tell you what the um, uh, order is, if it's first order, 6 dB per octave, or 8 dB, uh, uh, 12 dB per octave. Um, but you have that in the zero position. It's out. You can make it pre or post. Post meaning post the uh, compressor expander unit, which is over here, which we'll go over in a second. And you can place it in or out of the circuit here. Uh, the compressor, now, originally when I looked at this, I thought this was the Pi Telecom compressor, which was what it was at Olympic Studios um, on their mix bus, actually. But that was not the case here. This is a FET compressor, the F760, created by Helios. But it has a lot of the same things, including a one-to-one -one ratio, which basically means you're running through the circuitry for saturation, but you're not actually getting any gain reduction. Or maybe they use that as a way of just giving you gain control an additional gain control at the mix bus or something um, without any uh, attenuation but all of the numbers end up being very similar to what you have on the pi compressor except that is a, a pulse width um, a compressor a whole different technology than the FET compressor circuit that you have here so this is more akin to the 1176 in that way and then you have ratios that go all the way up to 20 to 1 the other thing that's cool here that the Pi doesn't have is that it's got a, a, a fast, medium, and slow attack. So the fast attack is uh, 0 0.025 milliseconds. So that's super fast. Uh, 2.5 seconds, uh, I'm sorry, milliseconds on the medium and 25 milliseconds on the slow setting. So you have that there. Release characteristic um, here, um, that's 0 0.25, uh, I guess that's milliseconds. Uh, is that milliseconds or is that seconds? 0.1 seconds would be 100 uh, milliseconds. So there you go. Yeah, okay. So 50 milliseconds, 25 milliseconds. Okay, let me get my math straight here. All the way up, and it also has an auto-release um, uh, feature, which is quite cool. So the release will sort of be following more or less the RMS signal, uh, sustained signal for its decay. Right, faster for more transient material, uh, slower for more sustained material. Um Pretty straightforward. You have a threshold here, right, for getting the gain reduction going. Now, what's interesting here is they have an input and output knob. And um, it's, well, this is related to some of the other settings, which I'll get to in a second. But essentially what this does is it allows you, it gives you an input, output, um, pre and post the expansion circuit. So you could drive more in energy in if you're cranking your threshold all the way down and not getting gain reduction. So I'll also get back to that limit thing here in a second. So uh, that becomes a useful way, and this comes at like an output gain control for the compressor as a way of working that. You could place this in and out of the circuit here. Uh, there is the Nouveau filter. So this is basically just doing a 3 dB per octave uh, tilt EQ into the sidechain circuit. So it'll... This essentially, in like the quick way of saying this, is that it will respond more to transient high frequency and it will tilt away the low frequency response so you get something that's uh, a bit more active in terms of the gain reduction. Again, you'll see the gain reduction over here. And then there's also a smash, which adds 20 dB to the input um, so that you're just crushing um, the uh, getting ton of gain reduction. So I'll show you an example of where 
I use that on the room mics. There's a limit here. So there's a limiter that's built into this. Uh, the red light will come on when you hit the limiter. There's no indication of exactly what type of limiter it is. It's like a 20 to 1 ratio. It's coming from that era, so it's not. there's not a lot of examples of brick wall limiters from that era. So I'm not exactly sure what ratio that is and how exactly that it works, but it is in the original circuit of the F760. Now, there are some settings here for this couple of things here which go up here before I get to the rest of the unit. One is setting the calibration. So set the calibration to whatever standard that you uh, gain uh, out your sessions to. I set mine to minus 18. So I want to try to get my average signal around minus 18. I usually go peaks no higher than minus 6. It leaves me plenty of headroom. And this usually works pretty well for that. You also have oversampling. So you could set the oversampling up to 16 times. Again, it's just a matter of what your CPU can handle. And it also gives you the ability to set that in all the instances. So you don't have to go one by one through them. Same with the calibration here. And you could also save it as a default. So every time you come up with it, it will come up with that setting for you. Uh, you could turn the noise on or off, same type of thing. This is where you get to the limiter sensitivity. So if it's set to low, uh, this is actually sort of the highest threshold. So it's a little bit backwards. Mid and normal um, would allow you to go lower. So you'll get this will light up more as you go through these settings upward. Again, you could save any of those as default. Zoom settings and you have external uh, sidechain capability. So if your DAW offers external sidechain capability, then uh, then it should show up here. And it's not showing up here, interestingly enough. So I'm not sure if that was uh, an error, uh, because normally there is that extra window there for that. So uh, interesting. All right, so maybe that's a bug that we're uh, coming across here. Anyway, you could set that uh, for either compressor expander or both, right? So it gives you that option there. Uh, the expander circuit can work basically in two ways. You have the same attack settings in terms of the timings for fast, medium, slow. Uh, you have the release. Uh, the release on this, let me just see if I can find it real quick. It goes from 25 milliseconds to 1.6 seconds on on uh, that setting, you know, for the release time of the gate, you have a range control down to 20 dB and a threshold. Now, uh, there is a switch here. If you hit the invert, it'll become a ducker. So it'll do the opposite and duck the signal by whatever amount there. There's also a hold feature, which will hold on to the signal a little bit before going into the release timing. Uh, and you could set it for a gate or expand mode, uh, which will uh, change uh, change the range essentially uh, a gate should go infinite uh, whereas a range will have sort of a floor uh, or expander should have like a floor I always think of it more like a difference between a limiter and a compressor sort of a similar idea I guess along those lines anyway um, let's see and then there's a, an output fader now the output fader if you drive it there is a, a um, there's an emulated um, transformer that's after this fader so pushing this up can also give you an output drive uh, and this is where the unity switch can sort of help out with gain structure because there's no otherwise you could actually the other way to do it not there would actually be to use the in out here which is pre-plugin post-plugin all together this is set up as a way to just sort of calibrate your in and out but it also acts as a fail safe here if you feel like you're changing the sound when you pull the gain down here uh, also, you have an A, B here, all the basic sort of stuff. So uh, pretty straightforward. Let's hear it. Let's have a, a listen to it and kind of go through it. So I'll take this out for a second. Uh, there's also just um, in addition to this, there is the Lindell bus or the 69 uh, bus. So this will give you the output bus electronics. Again, you can drive the harmonic distortion here. You got some gain control. You can invert the phase, uh, cut it do the unity gain things so if you want to drive it for saturation you could do a little bit of that as well uh plus it has the fader so here i went with this and i put it on each of my stem returns so i have my stem returns here for drums guitars keys vocals and horns i placed each one on there and then did a little tmt i also do that with the individual channels here where i just cascade them it gives you up to 32 on the tmt I don't know why I just don't give you 64. I guess the consoles back then were much smaller for sure, but, um, you know, 
doesn't matter now. All right, so let's uh, let's have a let's have a go at it, and uh, let's have a little listen, and I'll give you a little A B of everything in and out. So this is all of the channel strips in and out. Here we go. To deal with your actions, I can't buy you what you're selling me. Sick of all your contradictions, is this happening? <laughs> Try to find my own reality, cause my ideas are free. And the way that you've been acting seems like a one way street. <laughs> give you a, a basic idea of what it sounds with the whole mix here now uh it's this is a mix that i did actually um with the helios channel from from as as the basis the console basis from universal audio and then i uh, use the kramer pi as the compressor to sort of do my you know uh general compression across all of the individual channels but i kind of took this a little bit started to copy but then sort of went a little bit on my own because it felt a bit different plus there were more frequency options and more options in general so i could dig into it a little bit better but very comparable i'm not going to do a comparison here maybe that's a whole separate video let me know if that's something that you want to see maybe we'll lay that out but it's a little bit difficult because you end up with some different settings there are some things here that i felt were captured a little bit better there were some things that were captured better on the other one um also we have a fet compressor versus the um pi telecom compressor which is a different um uh, style compressor so you're not going to get some match up there but sounds really damn good so uh let's dig into it a couple things here like one thing here um you know with the bass and if i just sort of solo up here you know one of the things here just to to dig into this a little bit see if i can do it without blowing up the mix here which is to driving in it was driving some harmonic distortion here on the bass but i can drive this a bit more here as well now it's going to drive more gain reduction so let's see if i can kind of match it out here Right, so here it it's not the right sound for you know for the reggae track for this thing but but just to give you an idea of sort of what you can dig into there uh just a, a little bit of a flavor of it here let's go even farther with it All right so you know then you get the basic idea like you can just sort of really drive into it more so that's a cool thing so the saturation component of it is really cool a couple of other things here that uh are really worth uh pointing out here oops not that 
and it was just to give me a little high pass filter on the rooms um or low pass filter on the rooms uh this was just uh doing a little parallel uh compression here uh with the uh room track so So this is uh, using the smash here to sort of drive into this, get a significant amount of game reduction with the fast release. So it has a very similar characteristic to uh, like at the all buttons mode in, in 1176, which is kind of what I was going for. And then you could sort of cap it off as well here with the limiter. Now, in this case, it's just like the threshold is just way too high. I'm also driving some of the input to create a little bit of saturation on it. But, you know, just to give you a basic idea there of what you can sort of get from that, it's... it's uh, pretty cool it gives you a lot of flexibility and it can also be sort of very sweet and musical so if i move a bit over say like to the vocal here for example let me uh, go to a verse here so what's the deal with your actions i can't buy what you're selling me I'm sick of all your contradictions is this happening Trying to find my own reality Cause my ideas are free And the way that you've been acting Seems like a one-way street Don't you point your... So you have a, you have a fair amount of, of flexibility with this here. Now, I, the one thing I haven't tried here, let's just give it a, a whirl real quick, which would be to do something a little bit more like, you know, the smash and just sort of mix it in a little bit. So what's the deal with your actions? I can't buy what you're selling me. I'm sick of all your contradictions. Is this happening? I'm trying to find my own reality because my ideas are free. And the way that you've been acting seems like a one-way street. Yeah. Don't you point your energy with your lack of sympathy. Tell me how. Right, so they can kind of mix that in there, just do a parallel right on the inside of it. So what's the deal with your actions? I can't buy what you're selling me. Sick of all your contradictions. Is this happening? I try to find my own reality. Cause my ideas are free. So pretty cool. You get a lot of those similar kind of characteristics you get from that pumping and breathing you know, an all buttons mode kind of compression uh, like you get with um, the 1176. Really great unit. The EQ is very musical. Uh, having those extra step settings at 14K, 8K, and 10K are really amazing. Actually, I think it's 6K. I think it's 6K, 10K, 6K, 10K, and 14K. On the top end, you know, sound really sweet. Um, and this, the filter on the low end is actually really handy, particularly when you want to boost a little bit more energy into a particular section. The one, one final thing I just wanted to cover here just to show you is the, um, is the bus summing 
uh, emulation here. So let's just kind of go through that. So what's the deal with your actions? I can't buy what you're selling me. Sick of all your contradictions. Is this happening? I try to find my own reality. Cause my ideas are free. And the way that you've been acting seems like a one way street. Don't you point your energy with your lack of sympathy? Tell me how can you walk free? Your guilty. love these bus things they act like such a like great glue for everything i just happen to like i try this i usually do a comparison between that and the mix bus uh but putting each of the stem returns on a different number so it adds like a little bit of character and sometimes it adds some nice depth to everything uh really amazing plugin i don't know how you can go wrong here uh with this one this to me is a must-have it's such a great sound for reggae great sound for rock want to get like a bit of a vintage vibe on something it's just um it's just incredible and it's a lot of fun to work with there's an art to working with the eq uh and the gain structure uh because you're obviously limited in many ways sort of like you are with a 1073 you always feel like you need one more band or this frequency instead of that frequency but there are always ways to deal with that and that is kind of part of the vibe and part of the sound all right so uh there you have it. Plugin of the week, a killer one from Plugin Alliance and Lindell. It's the 69 series. Check it out.